All right. Well, you know, one of the great things that we're going to do a lot of is solving equations. We're going to want to solve everything because you have an equation. Someone gives you an equation. You set up a problem. It requires an equation. You want to find out what the solutions are. OK, great. Well, there's some you know, sort of basic techniques that you can use to solve equations. And I thought that the, one of the things we should do is just take a look at some you know, basic equations and see how you would solve them. All these equations are actually linear equations, which just means that when you see the variables, they're all just going to be to the first power. There won't be like any x cubes or x to the 217th power. We're not going to see that now. That'll be in maybe the next lecture or somewhere. But right now, it's all going to be just stuff with just x's and other things in it. So let's take a look and line up and solve an equation, sort of like a limbo line. Can you see that? I don't even know if you can see that. So look at all the people lining up. They're lining up. It's like they're lining up just to solve an equation. Where else? Where else but on the web? OK, let's try an example. Suppose someone gives us this equation. 2x minus 5 equals x plus 7. What we want to do is we want to find out what value of x will satisfy this. Now let me just say just two words here to remind you sort of what's going on here. x is really just a placeholder. x represents some mysterious number that, that someone has hid from us. It's like a hiding, in fact, think of it as hide and go seek, right? Someone's hiding and we have to find x. Okay, now how do you do that? Well, you know that this relationship holds. So what we want to do is we want to isolate x, have x all by itself, and then figure out what x is. At the end of the day after work, we want to have x equals nu. So what I want to do is try to get x's on one side, everything else on the other. The way I'm going to do that is the following. To bring the x over, I'm just going to subtract the x from both sides. See, since x equals x, I can subtract it from both sides, and nothing's going to change. So here I'm going to see a 2x, but then I subtract an x. That just gives me an x minus 5. And now x minus x, that drops out as 0, and I still have that 7 there. And now I want x all by itself, so I just add 5 to both sides which doesn't change the value of anything. And this side, I just have x, and then fi minus 5 plus 5 is 0. They drop out. And then here, I have 7 plus 5, which is about 12. So I see that x is 12. x has been exposed. x exposed. That's why we use the letter x. You probably wondered about that. I just made that up. Anyway, uh, you can always check your answer, by the way, by taking the 12 and placing it back in on both sides for x and make sure this is OK. Let's just do that together in our heads. Um, if I put in a 2 here, 2 times 12 is 24. 24 minus 5 is 19. And if I put a 12 in on this side, and I take 12 and add to 7, I get 19. So I see 19 equals 19. We're OK. OK, so that's all there is to solving uh, linear equations. Let's try another one just for grins here. How about 5 times y plus 3? plus 4y minus 5 equals negative 2y minus 4. Well, there's a lot of stuff here. And again, the theme always is to find y. But what I want to do is try to get all the y's sort of collected together here, an equal sign, and everything else on the other side. So to that end, the first thing I'm going to do is to make all these distributive things here. I want to distribute that 5. This parentheses means that this 5 has to be multiplied not only by the y, but also, it's got to hit the 3. And similarly, this negative sign, that's actually a negative 1 there in disguise, that thing has to not only hit the 2y, but also has to hit the minus 4. So I'm going to do all that distributing right now, just so we can see where we are. We'd be at 5y plus 15 plus 4y minus 5 equals minus 2y. And then a minus times a minus becomes a plus 4. So that's what it looks like. Now what? Well, now I'm going to try to put all the y's together. So I have a 5y here and a 4y here. That's 9y. And let's see, I can combine these numbers. I have a, five, a 15 minus 5, which would be a plus 10. And that equals minus 2y plus 4. Now I'll bring all the y's on the same side by, let's see, I'll move this to this side. And by moving it, I've got to actually change the sign. Or another way of thinking about it is I'm going to add 2y to both sides. How do I know I'm to add 2y? Well, because I'm subtracting it here, and I want these to cancel out. So I do the opposite of whatever I'm doing to move it over. Here I'm going to have 11y plus 10 equals, and these cancel out, and I'm just left with the 4. Great. Now I want to bring that 10 over, so I'll subtract 10 from both sides. And if I subtract 10 from both sides, what would I see? I would see 11y 
equals, if I bring this 10 over, I'd see minus 6. Because 4 minus the 10 would be minus 6. And so y would equal minus 6 over 11. And again, you might want to go back and take minus 6 over 11 and plug it in for each value of y here and each value of y there and make sure that this number equals that number. And you can check that and see that this answer is correct. So that's all there is to solving these things. Let me try one last one, maybe. Try to stir things up a little teeny bit more. It's hard to stir things up when you know, just looking at these linear equations. Not much stirring. No stirring involved. Shaken, not stirred. Suppose I have 2t plus 5 over 5, and I, I set that equal to... Uh, t plus 2 over 3, and I want to find out what value of t will make this thing true. Well, it looks like I have a whole bunch of fractions here, so that might be sort of scary. And to be honest with you, fractions frighten me a little bit. So I like to not have them there anymore. So one way to get rid of them would be to multiply through both sides by the same number so that the fractions would go away. Well, one thing I could do, for example, is multiply everything through both sides by 5. If I did that, notice what would happen. The 5 here would cancel with a multiplicative 5 here. Unfortunately, I still have that 3 over here. But if I multiplied everything through by 3, then I could cancel that. So it seems like 15 is a great thing to multiply both sides by. So I'm going to multiply this side by a 15. And I'm going to multiply this side by a 15. If I multiply two sides of an equal sign by the same number, it's not going to change the value. So if you have an uh, equality, multiplying both sides by 15, not going to change anything. But now, look at the cancellation. This is fantastic. The bottom goes away, and it costs me a 3 on top. Uh, this 3 goes away, it costs me a 5 on top. Some people, by the way, think of this as cross-multiplying. You might think of 5 times this times uh, 3 times this, and it's the exact same thing if you think about it. Anyway, uh, now I've got to distribute, though. Don't forget to distribute that all the way through. So that's going to be a 6t plus 15. See, the 15 is because I have to distribute. And now I'm going to distribute the other way and see 5t plus 10. And now I'm going to start to do a lot of these manipulations just, uh, just verbally. This 5t, to get it to that side, I have to subtract it from both sides. So imagine a minus 5t here. I have 6t minus 5t is just t alone. And if I take that 15 plus 15, if I want to get to that side, I should subtract 15 from both sides. And so that would be a 0 here. And then here I have a minus 15. And so a minus 15 plus 10 would be minus 5. So in fact, t would equal minus 5. So even when you have sort of denominators with numbers, you can clear off those denominators by multiplying through by a, a common multiple. And all of a sudden, you have a simple linear equation. You can solve it.